Hey, it's Ben Hassel here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at a couple of different things. So we're going to be having a look at the M Quotes plugin and doing a little bit of a tutorial review of how we can work with that. We're also going to have a look at how we create Instagram-like square videos uh, with a quote in it, and we're going to look at how we can animate and bring a bit of life to some of the images that we're using in those uh, quotes. So basically, we'll be looking at uh, different ways in which we can nest sequences and create animation, uh, and then bring that all together uh, in a little Instagram quote animation. So we'll dive in and have a look at how we set this up. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump up to our titles and have a little look at M quotes. So we'll scroll down to M quotes here, and you can see we have a whole kind of range of different quote animations uh, that we can use and some of them just have a type, some of them have this quote uh, with an image that kind of sits to the left or to the right or to the top um, of the quotes. Uh, and we're gonna have a look at this little rectangular quote that we have here. And um, we're gonna look at two things here. One is how to get an image um, into this drop zone, and then also how we can animate images and get those into the drop zone as well. So that's kind of a neat trick if you don't have video, but you wanna create an animated Instagram post, uh, then this will give you a lot of nice control over that style of video. So we're gonna set this up in 16, 9, 19, 20 by 1080 first of all, and then we're gonna drop it into a square video that will be postable on Instagram. We'll give a couple of quick tips at the end for setting up your Instagram post. So be sure to kind of watch through to the end. There's a couple of cool little tips for doing that right at the end. So we'll drop this down to the timeline here. And you can see here that in this little quote animation, it's really nice and slick. And um, we have an animate in, and then we have an animate out at the end. Uh, and then we have the drop zone up at the top here and a real nice kind of level of control. So we can relocate our quote. We'll just reset that up here in the inspector. If you don't see the inspector yet, just go to window, show in workspace and reveal the inspector. And with the motion VFX plugins, you can expect a really high level of refinement in the way they're set up. So if you're looking for really high quality plugins where cost isn't really so much of an issue, but it's more about kind of getting the job done and saving a lot of time, then the motion VFX plugins are really worth their weight in gold in terms of giving you all the options you need to set things up. So we'll jump in and change a couple of the basic elements here. And we have some basic surf quotes here that we're gonna grab. So we'll select this quote from Kerry Mullis and we're gonna drop it into our quote text. So you can see really nicely labeled there. We do have to add in our line breaks in here. And that's common for a lot of type plugins. So we'll just set this up and get this all in position. And we'll just tweak this a little bit. So we're gonna tweak the quote size, get that to the right spot and we can change the tracking, we can change the spacing here, we'll give this a little bit more space, and then we'll scroll down and we'll change the author from Oscar Wilde, who I believe was not a surfer, to Kerry Mullis. And we'll drop that in there. So we have the type set up. If we play this through, you can see it kind of flows on the screen super nicely, all the little details, the animation uh, are really nice. We can modify the color um, of some of these elements here. So we might wanna just add a little pinch of color in there for things like the author color. Uh, we can modify the, the quote color as well if we want to, but we're gonna leave that as is. Uh, and then we're gonna have a look at this drop zone. So if we scroll down here, so you can see we've got options here for the different alignments of the type. If we scroll down here, um, we're gonna find this drop zone. And here we need to come back to our library so we can see the images that we're gonna use. And we're gonna grab our folder of surfers here to start with. And then we need to jump back to the timeline to M quotes and we'll scroll back down to our drop zone. And here we're gonna click on the image source and we're gonna come across and we'll grab this guy. It looks pretty relaxed in the water and you can see straight away we get this nice image at the top there. Now, one of the things we wanna do with some of the Instagram posts is keep that visual interest going to kind of keep people looking and eyes on the post for just that little bit longer. So we have our quote working really nicely here and we're gonna go ahead and have a look at how we get some images and then some animated images into the drop zone. So this is gonna involve a little bit of Ken Burns effect and then also um, exporting out uh, a video of our animation. So we'll grab our position tool here and we're just using this to select these three clips. I'm holding down shift to select them all. 
And with the position tool, it just means we can drop them kind of away from the end of this quote. And we'll jump straight back to the selection tool here. And I want to make these all five seconds long. So I'm just going to hold down Control and tap B and type in five periods. So we have a 15 second little animation we're going to make here. And what we'll do is we're going to select these one at a time and just add the Ken Burns effect here. And we're just going to leave this kind of nicely centered on our surface here. Okay, select the second one, add the Ken Burns effect, and we'll just set this up. Then the last one, select it, add the Ken Burns effect, and we'll just leave this kind of nice and centered on here. And if we grab this middle clip, I've got my default transition set to the default, which is dissolve. I'm going to do Command and T, and it's going to add a default transition there. So you can see we've got this kind of nice slow animation between these three different photographs. Okay. So I'm going to come into these three clips and I'm going to use the up arrow here to come to the very start of this clip. And I'm going to use I to mark an endpoint. And I'm going to come to the end of my sequence and then just back one frame so that I'm on the last frame of this clip and I'm going to mark an out point. And with this range selected on the timeline, I can now come up to my share options. We'll go to master file and we'll export this out with the video and audio settings set to H.264. We're kind of scaling this down a lot so it's not going to matter too, too much that we can press it. And we'll just give this a little name so we know what it is. Call it Surface Slideshow. And then we'll save that. And we'll come back into our Finder once it's exported. And we're looking for our Surface Slideshow. We'll drop this back into our event of Surface. And so now with this little animation in a video, if we select our quotes here, We'll come up to our drop zone, click on our drop zone, and then click right at the beginning of this video, and then apply that to the clip. Now you can see that animated version of the video we've made there is going to drop into the top of our quote, which is going to give this a real nice animated feel. Now sometimes you won't get the framing right of your shots. Um, obviously here we can see where we've kind of cropped this off here. So we just need to do a little bit of repair to make sure that we're framing this on the right spot. So it looks like we need to kind of lower this down in the framing of our shot. So we'll zoom in a bit more and just have a little bit of subtle animation. And then obviously we can just check that and select our range again. Now we can select the range with I and O or we can grab our range selection tool and just select all three of those clips. And it's this different type of selection with the range that allows us to export out a range of our timeline. So we'll just export this out and I'm going to call this Surface Slideshow R02. So we know it's revision two. It's going to export out pretty quickly. And then we'll jump into our finder grab the new version and we will go back to our selection tool, jump back to the beginning, go to our drop zone and then we can come into our surfers and we'll select this revision 2 version, apply that and then just check the framing and that's a bit better. So we've kind of just dropped her down in the framing of that shot. So that's adding a bit of animation to our quote. Now we want to add a bit of image uh, behind the quote. So I'm going to just select all this and we'll delete it. And we've got some images of waves and trees and kind of ocean landscapes that we're going to drop into the background here. So we'll set up a few of these. And I'm going to select all these and do Control and D. Type in five period. We'll make this 15 seconds long. Let's add a couple more images here. 
and we'll raise up our quote here and so you can see now we get that quote against the backdrop of those different locations so we'll just select all this and my quote is 21 seconds let's make it 20 seconds long so I'm going to do control and D and just type in 20 period so that's the length of my quote and I'm going to do control and D here and type in 5 period and so all my clips are now 5 seconds long so if I select these two middle clips and do command and T it's going to add my transition there and then we're just going to go through all these and quickly add the Ken Burns effect and we're not going to work on adjusting those too much we can come back in and tweak things if we need to. Okay, and we'll click done up here. So now you can see we've got a little bit of movement in the background. We've got our quote in the foreground. And the only thing I would say here is that the image in the background, because it's super high contrast and in sharp and in focus, uh, it's kind of fighting a little bit with what we have in our quote. So one last thing we can do is if we select all of these clips, we could add one of the Final Cut Pro color tints to it, or you can grab one of the Motion VFX uh, colorized tools if you want, but something like sepia will just mean that we're able to kind of drop that back in the background. And if not sepia, then maybe something like colorize. So I'm just gonna select this last clip, position our playhead over there, and we'll add some colorize effects there. And I'm gonna just set this to like a nice kind of green and cool blue. We'll just push that up. So if we add this color tint in the background, that's gonna work quite nicely too. And then we can, once we've got it right on one image, we can copy that, so Command and C, select our other videos here, and then use Edit and Paste Attributes to paste those attributes. I'm not gonna paste the crop attributes. That can sometimes mess things up when you paste the Ken Burns effect, so we'll paste that in there. And you can see now we've got our quote in the foreground there with that nice kind of color in the background. So. Let's just deselect everything. What I like to do uh, with these is if we now export this out as a master file, I'm going to change my settings and export it out as Apple ProRes 422. And now that will just kind of keep the quality. We'll save this as M quotes export 1080p. And then whilst that's exporting, we'll just go to File, New, and Project. And we're gonna make a custom square layout. So 1080 by 1080, 29 frames per second. And we'll call this square M quote. And then once our video has exported, we can come back into the Finder We've got our 1080p export here, and we can drag that straight to this square timeline. We'll drop in there nicely. And all we need to do here is scroll down with our clip selected and change the fitting to none. Now we could have set this up as a square video in the first place, but sometimes it's nice to have that 16.9 format as well. And I've been mindful to keep the quote kind of in the middle here, but this is perfect for that. Instagram uh, square post um, if that's something you're looking to develop and you can see we can layer up the M quotes with those images as a video animation and then create a bit of animation in the background to kind of keep that image moving and to keep people engaged uh, with what we're posting online. And the nice thing about doing it in Final Cut Pro rather than an app is that you have kind of 100% control over everything that you're doing, the text positioning, the animation timing, the images in the background, the color you're using and all that kind of stuff. So next step is to obviously upload this to Instagram. So we're gonna go to share. I'm gonna share it as a master file. We'll change our settings to H.264 and hit next. And we'll save this as where M quote, Insta, export 
and that should export out pretty quickly. So once that's exported, if we come to our finder, I'm going to go to File and New Finder Window, and we're going to jump to AirDrop. And then if you've got AirDrop set up on your phone, once you unlock that, your phone should pop up. And then we can grab our square export, drop it in there, and then it will pop up on our phone. And on the phone, it should save into your image library. And we can share it uh, from here, but we're going to jump right into Instagram. And we'll go to add a new post. And you should see your video pop up. We've made it 15 seconds long, so it's nice and short. We can just accept this as it is. And we can obviously add a color tint to it. But we've kind of done that already in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm just going to post it to my Ben Housel account. And we'll just write surf is life. A bit cheesy, I know. Hashtag surf. Hashtag surfing. Hashtag surfer. Click OK and then hit share. So now you can see that uploads pretty quickly and when we scroll to it, it starts to animate. So kind of grabbing people's interest really quickly uh, in that square image format on Instagram. So obviously this square image um, will post on Instagram, but it will also post on Facebook as well. So if we jump into Facebook, we can come into photo, into our camera roll, and we can grab that, post this. So you can see here on Facebook, again, uh, it works really nicely. If we come to Facebook on the desktop, and we'll just come to my account, you can see that plays through it really nicely on the desktop or on the phone in Facebook. And so that is a quick overview um, of the MQuotes plugin. Um, there's a whole ton more controls in the MQuotes plugin that we haven't really had a look at, um, such as the positioning. And obviously we can change things like the fonts. We can turn things on and off like the author here. We can turn off uh, the drop zones and stuff as well. So if we don't want those drop zones up at the top, uh, then we don't have to have them. Um, and we can also pan things as well. So we can change the positioning of uh, things here as well. So that image that we had at the end where the panning wasn't quite right. Um, so if we, we can kind of pan that down and then check if that works for the other images. And if it does, then that's good. Our image here kind of freeze frames at the end, um, and we've probably run this on a bit too long uh, for the quote, but we've still got that image moving in the background, so I think that's okay. Anyway, that's a quick overview of M quotes. Really super slick type plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. Great for things like Instagram and Facebook, but also obviously if you're producing video in a non-social media context as well, it can be really useful. Uh, I hope this tutorial has been useful. Hopefully, it's a uh, been useful for M quotes, but also included some other tips and tricks for Final Cut Pro 10. If you have any questions, as always, leave them below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.